All right, welcome to the engine swap of my engine swap. So I got started on it yesterday. I didn't do an awful lot, but I did some bits and pieces. So for those who don't know anything about this, just real quick, I am having to engine swap my engine swapped Toyota Corolla, which you can see there. It's got a 4AGE engine in it. And underneath here is the replacement 4AGE. Uh, I swapped over the water pumps resealed them and uh, what else did I do? So water pump swapped over as you can see they're looking nice uh, uh, uh. I took off the alternator uh, and the bracket I can't put this one on it yet because the engine mount has to go uh, in part over it this is I don't know what this actually is this was on this engine I don't think it's an engine mount, but anyway, the engine mount, which is currently in that engine, has to use some of these holes as well. So this can't go on just yet. Um, and you know what? That was actually it, to be fair. It took bloody ages into, well, what we're doing now today, or at least what I'm going to be doing and then with the first part of the video. Um, definitely taking this off. So this is... From what I can tell, it's for a oil cooler. So, I mean, I think what I can do, I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm not, you know, this is for an MR2 Mark One. So I'm not 100% familiar, but I'm gonna have to take off this bracket here. Um, gotta take this out. I know this is a bung. Uh, and it's probably got a banjo bolt in it, but we're gonna take this out anyway. Uh, and probably just put another bolt in it. Take this off, this whole unit here. And I would imagine, imagine, I don't know this for certain, but I would imagine underneath here is just a slot just for a normal thing, because it's just basic engine. Um, but what we are gonna do is degrease the absolute piss out of this engine as well. Um, which is, we're probably gonna do that before we start taking some bits off actually. Uh, and another thing I need to do, <laughs> is change the clutch. Um, I do have a clutch. Uh, we're gonna change that over as well because I don't know the state of this clutch and I bought another one. They were cheap enough. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So I guess first things first is spray it down actually with this degreaser, which is actually for a kitchen, but never mind, should be fine. So literally just spray the ever-loving piss out of it. It's that nice citrus fresh. Uh, leave it to soak in. Hopefully it will... Yeah, I, I will spray that down as well, actually. Um, I'm hoping that this will clean up a lot of it because it is an absolute state. So anyway, I'll come back when I start right, to spray it down. Not much came off actually, to be fair. Not much came off at all. Um, so I think what we're gonna do first, I'm gonna take this off and have a look at what the hell is going on here and see mainly if I actually have a bolt that will be able to fit down in there. Cause I don't know if I do. It's all a bit, yeah, don't know. I think that, I, I swear that must be for an oil cooler. <sighs> Must be. I'm reckoning anyway. But yeah, don't want it. Don't want it. So I'm gonna take that off. Uh, <clears throat> just all this bracketry that doesn't need to be there before we get into the meatier things. But um, new water pump's all good to go. Well, old water pump, but it was a new one, so that's all good. Uh, and yeah, I know it looks like a mess, but this is, yeah, I didn't really wanna pack all my stuff away. So what we'll do, like I said, is uh, get started on this down here. All right, so um, actually this is not for an oil cooler. I don't know what this is. Maybe just a different way to circulate oil. Honestly, I actually have no idea, I'm assuming it was a f because of how the engine was mounted, they changed this round 
rather than just having the oil filter bang straight in the block. So this is to help circulate oil a bit more freely. I'm gonna guess. I Honestly, I actually don't know. Um, but that is my educated guess. So what we're gonna do, um, I've got it wedged up here. And what we are going to do is probably start taking off um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know actually. <laughs> so it's quite a lot to deal with. Because um, I've got to leave the loom semi on it. Uh, I reckon I reckon we can remove the intake. Remove the intake. Yeah, we'll remove the intake. We'll do that. Probably take these off actually, the valve covers, just to take a look and see what they're like inside. Um, because I've got nice valve covers that I can go on. Um, and I will say as well, if anyone wants any parts, give me a shout. Give me a shout, why not? Because I've got parts. Um, I don't know how good they are, but I've got parts. So I reckon what we'll do is we'll take part of the intake off, swap it round with the, the thing that's in there, because this is the wrong, yes, the wrong orientation. Um, uh, I've got to take off, actually, do need to swap this round as well, part for the cooler, and probably actually looking at it, the fuel rail as well, interesting, interesting, yeah, probably the fuel rail as well. So that's probably what we're going to do, start dismantling this. Um, yeah, let's do that. Well, it's not pretty in there. I think what we're going to have to do is get the hoover out, because that's pretty gross. Thankfully, spark plugs are in there, so nothing's got down in there anyway, but we'll get the, we'll get the hoover out, clean up all of this, because that's pretty gross. So yeah, that's just the centerpiece off. So yeah, get the uh, hoover out, clean that up. So I wasn't expecting it to be like immaculate or anything like that. It's from a breaker's yard. Guy that just deals in these cars as spares so uh, that's okay that's fine um, probably give it a quick wipe down with a cloth spray it down wipe it down and it's probably pretty good enough I think um, again it doesn't need to be immaculate the car just needs to be good enough um, as long as internally it's okay which we'll see in a minute actually to be fair so Spray that in there. We'll um, we'll see in a minute whether internally it's okay because we'll have a look and see if there's any sort of slug. Take these bloody gloves off. See if there's any sludge uh, building up. So pop you there so you can have a good look at me cleaning because apparently people like to watch cleaning sometimes. If I can get you to actually stay still, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Probably actually won't do too much, to be fair. Just, uh, yeah, it's not really doing anything. Just a basic degreaser that I've got. Well, it's a kitchen degreaser, but anyway, I'm rambling shit. Ah, uh, no, it's kind of coming up a little bit. Right, now I'll just get these valve covers off. Have a look at that then, shall we? Because that'll be the real, that'll tell us whether the engine's been relatively looked after. It's just whether there's like a ton of sludge or not. Which is okay, because I can just do some flushes and multiple oil changes to get that gone if 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 
it is full of sludge, which I'm hoping it's not. But let's just get these valve covers off. Stop um, procrastinating it. Because the valve covers that I've got are nice, they're nice and tidy. They've got all the gaskets on them. Fresh gaskets. These are loose, which is not a good sign, I don't think. That's finger tight. I did not loosen them, just so you know. So that's not good. Uh, okay, let's, uh, yeah, are these? Okay, well this one's not so finger tight. How bizarre. Just wanna see the sludge or lack of. I'm hoping it's lack of sludge. Ah, uh, no, that's finger tight. Uh, and then we'll do the clutch, which is something I've never done before. So, but you know, first for everything, I guess. But the uh, valve covers that I do have are really nice. Uh, oh, okay, right. Moment of truth. Uh, that's nice. That's actually really nice. There is a bit of silicone, but yeah, no, that's nice. Have a look at that. No sludge. I was expecting sludge. You buy an engine, I didn't see it running, which is again bad, yes, I know. Um, you hope for the best, expect the worst, but that's good. I'll get the other one out, swap them over, bolt it in, and then jobs are good. And I'll show you the other one when we've got it off. Right, well, yeah, both nice and clean. Literally no issue with any of that. That's good. I am happy with them. So we'll just put the new ones on. That'll look nice. And then we'll tackle this intake. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's good. You can see, no sludge. All pretty nice inside, to be honest. Again, I will probably do a few. Uh, I will do a few uh, f oil changes. That's not a good sign. What is that? Huh. That's really not a good sign. At all. Let me. Hmm. Maybe I speak too soon. I don't know. Yeah, some of that could just been... Some of that could have just been from me trying to get the valve covers off. I'm gonna hope it's that. Hopefully. But I will do some oil changes. Once it's up and running, I know the engine runs, I will do some oil changes. Sort of flush it out. <laughs> anyway, new valve covers, let's put them on. All right, so, starting to look like an engine again. That one's now not looking like an engine. In fact, it's been completely taken apart and that's fine. So, now, need to take a look at this fuel rail because I just need to double check that they're, a, well, they're, <laughs> near enough the same, which I think they are. It seems to be like two regulators on it though. I think, I mean that's a regulator there. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, there doesn't seem to be a regulator on this one, actually. So, fuel pressure regulator. Um, <laughs> I'm going to assume, and this is factory, that's factory, I'm going to assume, assume, that I might just be able to swap them over, but I'm going to go on a, I don't know where the regulator is, down through here, to the back, to this fuel line, yeah, I'm at a loss where the regulator is there. 
I don't think there is one. It might have a different setup for the MR2. Well, I mean, it does have a different setup for the MRT. So I think what we'll do, we'll start cleaning up some of this anyway, but we will, I mean, it's, I reckon we could just swap that over, the whole thing. But then it does have different connectors for its um, injectors, but the injectors should be fine and I do actually have new injectors which might suit this one more than it suited that one because they have a few different injectors for this this engine so I reckon what we do now strip this off strip that off and just play swap a room because looking at it everything else is the same like all of these yeah it looks like everything else is the same. I'm thinking, yeah, looks about the same. Some of this is guesswork, by the way, guys, if you hadn't guessed that. But there are some stuff there at the back. What's that going to? That's a, that's a vacuum. Uh, vacuum sensor going into there. Where's the vacuum sensor for this then? Where's that? Because there will be one. Uh, well, I'm guessing there will be one. I think I think I saw it already. Sorry, some of this is just guesswork. I'm guessing as I go along. Aha, here we go. So here's the vacuum sensor. without anything plugged into it. Where would that go then? Ha, huh. okay. Um. Yeah. Now I'm not so sure. Uh, okay, I think what we'll do, we'll do, some, we'll, do, we'll do something easy to start off with. We will take off this water line and then get back to it. Right, welcome guys. Um, I'm gonna have to make sense of this in the edit bay. I don't know quite where I'm at with any of this content and this video, but we've done a lot on the car, well, the engine, um, before it then goes in. So I'm just gonna show you what I've done um, and talk you through it. This is before someone comes to help me with it because it's quite a big job. Right, okay, so. <sighs> This is just to uh, keep it all nice and sorted. So what have I done, right? So interestingly, the AW11 MR2 has this like additional oil filter housing. I don't know why, it might be because of the pickup tube or something along those lines. I'm not 100% I'm not certain, right? I don't know why. Um, so yeah, not overly sure. Uh, about that at all. Um, so taking that off, there was a bolt inside, which obviously is the thread for the oil filter itself. That's come off now. That is threaded directly into the engine block. In theory, that should be good, actually. It should be enough. I'm gonna do a little bit more research just to double check that. Um, and just, yeah, want be 100% certain the, the pickup tube and things like that will be fine in this setup. Uh, I think it might be because the orientation of the engine in the AW11 is transverse. So it might be because of that. I don't know. But anyway, so we've done that. That's all done. Um, you saw the valve covers, they're all on. Uh, we did the water pump. That's all fully sealed. I'm hoping it's fully sealed. Don't know whether it is because obviously I've sealed, I've sealed it, but I don't know if it is sealed. So that's, we'll double check that when obviously water goes in it and hopefully it doesn't leak. Um, this, uh, I don't know what that is, thermostat I'm guessing. Um, anyway, it's part of the, 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 the coolant system. That's all on there now, all sealed up as well. Hopefully sealed, fingers crossed. Um, intake system's on. We've got the uh, fuel rail on. This is the old fuel rail with the new fuel filters. They're not new, secondhand new. 
because these are different clips. So they're specific, the, the, the uh, fuel injectors clips are specific to this loom. So I've had to swap them over, but I know that this fuel filter works, a uh, fuel line, sorry, fuel rail works. So I put that on. Intake system was a bit of a ball ache, but that's all on now. Just needs to be wired up. Uh, what else did I do? Um, uh, 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 seemed like a lot more. Doesn't seem like, oh, I had to do, had to get these, I uh, had to get the bolts in here, uh, studs, bolts, studs, whatever, out of that block into this block. So did that. Um, what on earth is that? Uh, don't know what that is. I have to double check that on the other block. I um, don't know what that is either, actually. What is that? Uh, but anyway, so that's pretty much it, really. It's been pretty full on. It has been pretty full on, not gonna lie. Um, so this is, this is interesting for those that care. This is the variable intake system, TVs, um, Toyota variable intake system. So these little butterflies and yeah, basically they sort of open and close uh, and vary the sort of intake basically. So it changes the torque at different RPM. Um, yeah, that's it. Seems, I mean, it is a lot. It's, it's been probably a good half day's work, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so that's all done now. Jasper here, how's it going, bud? You all right, mate? He's a good boy, yes, he is. Um, so anyway, <laughs> uh, so the idea, but the, the idea in doing that now is because I'm paying someone to come and help me because I don't have the time to do it all myself. I don't have the inclination to do it all myself. I don't have the equipment to do it all myself. Um, you know, I don't have a cherry pick. So, you know, engine hoist, I could buy one, but they're, they're quite expensive. They're like 300 pounds. Then I've still got to do it all myself. I can't wire it all myself. I'd still have to get someone to do that. So I might as well get a mechanic slash electrician to come and help me do the engine swap who has the equipment. But I also might as well do the majority of it myself that, that I can do, like swapping everything over. So the next bit you see, I'm hoping will be bits and pieces of the engine swap. I'll see, not everyone likes to be on camera, so I'm not gonna be like, oh mate, can I get my camera out? Cause that's, mate, that's fucking lame as shit. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Otherwise, the next bit you see is the engine starting up, the new engine. I've got all new um, fluids for it, new oil. Uh, I've also got gearbox oil as well, um, new coolant. I've got everything I need for it, for this new engine. I've got new spark plugs, a new oil filter, you saw that. So we'll see. I've got my fingers crossed that this is gonna work. And if it doesn't, then I probably, I am genuinely probably just gonna give up on the fucking car because I've, I've had enough of really shit stuff with cars. So. So fingers crossed it works. Anyway, cheers. Next clips, fingers crossed. Pray for me. Also Jasper. Hey bud. He doesn't care. Pray for me. Right, welcome guys. This might come as a bit of shock, uh, but <laughs> it's a joke. The mechanic let me down. Yeah, so what you're about to see is me uh, doing an engine swap. Well, trying to anyway. I had to buy an engine crane, engine hoist, um, and a tilt attachment. Uh, I'm not happy about it. Basically, the guy, mechanic, uh, I waited two weeks to, uh, to, to to get this booked in, and he didn't bother to tell me on the day uh, that he wasn't coming. I called him, and he was like, yeah, sorry, I've got other stuff. I'm like, what do you mean you got other stuff? I booked this in. Um, so, yeah, he's a dickhead. He's an absolute wanker, so never mind. Uh, and I got, I got very, very angry, raged, obviously, and decided, you know, I'm just going to do it myself. Because you want something done right. You, you got to do it yourself, basically, haven't you? So now, as you can see here, uh, I'm, 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 I'm bolting up the engine, ready to come out. Taking off the uh, here. I think I'm just, I'm taking off the engine mounts. Uh, I had to take off the the bonnet, of course, uh, and yeah, you'll see. It, it, in fairness, it does come out pretty easy. Uh, I'd, I'd already taken off the bell housing bolts, 
So I just sort of started to lift it up and it separated from the transmission pretty smoothly. Um, but part of the issue with this engine crane was I actually had the legs uh, on the wrong way. And in a minute, you will watch me drag the engine hoist and the engine because uh, I was an idiot and I, uh, I bolted up the engine hoist the wrong way. So yeah, fun times. You see, I'm dragging it there. I'm having a fun time dragging the other engine. I'm dragging it along. It's not rolling properly. I'm dragging it. It was, yeah, it wasn't fun. Um, you can actually see, in fact, that they are around the wrong way. The, the wheels are upwards. They should be down. So I'm an idiot. But never mind, we got there. We got there. Uh, and anyway, this is just big time-lapse footage. Uh, and I thought I'd just talk you through it. Still haven't heard from the mechanic, by the way. Anyway, so this is quite important. So what I had to do was I had to take off the flywheel of the old engine because the new engine had a different flywheel, uh, which I bought a new clutch. Clutch didn't work on the new fl engine's flywheel. So I'd take off the old engine's flywheel. Um, <laughs> here you can see I'm putting up the essentially the fitting for the 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 the, the, the coolant uh, for the back of the engine um, that didn't work out very well actually I, had to, uh, I snapped a bolt and had to drill it out so uh, you can see that's me what I'm doing here um, so snap that and had to drill it out tap it that was a bit of a nightmare as well just a big old joke basically this whole thing was a big old joke it wasn't fun uh, anyway I change a clutch over in a minute, which is a, a brand new thing. I put a spigot bearing in, the AW114AGE, because that's a thing that it doesn't have, and obviously a rear-wheel drive car needs a spigot bearing. Apparently, a transverse-mounted engine doesn't come with a spigot bearing, which is, yeah, something I didn't know. Anyway, I didn't have a clutch alignment tool, so that's actually what I'm making there. Uh, I made a clutch alignment tool. Uh, it didn't work out uh, at all. That was just me hammering it on the dowels. Um, you know, I sort of screw it all in and stuff like that. And I'm like, uh, it's not actually quite centered. So that was a bit frustrating. Um, so I had to unbolt it all, which you'll watch me do in a minute because I start noticing it's not quite centered. And I'm like, ah, yeah, this wasn't fun, basically. It was, it was literally ever so slightly off, but I didn't want to take the risk because this has been not fun don't know what's that dangling down there what is that dangling down in shot i think that's the <laughs> been photobombed i think that is the arm for the um the engine crane anyway so i get it all centered up this is a very low torque wrench by the way so don't worry about that uh, anyway, so it's fully centered. I, I pull pull out my clutch alignment tool that I made, and I've changed the clutch. This is an Exidi clutch, so quite cheap though. It wasn't expensive. Um, presumably, it's just all stock. It wasn't like a stage one, stage two. It was just an Exidi clutch for the 4AGE. Um, so, yeah, that was all right. Uh, this has been a nightmare, by the way, though, guys. This whole engine mission was not fun um yeah it, it was it was quite debilitating actually it, it, it's broken my body for a few days now so anyway as you can see i'm just wandering around i'm looking at stuff trying to figure out where hoses go on the new engine that's what i'm trying to do at the moment i remember that and bolts as well just trying to figure out bolts and stuff like that it's, it's been a bit of a nightmare anyway now now oh yes now now we uh, begin putting it in properly now this has been a bit of a pain in the arse so i've got it all lined up and stuff uh i I've, at first i've got the alternator on because there is an engine mount that goes over uh the no go the the alternator bracket goes over the engine mount so i was like well i'll just put it all on and then i'll you know um you know mount it that way but then i'm like ah, oh, it doesn't work so i've got to take the I ended up having to take the radiator out, which I should have done straight away anyway. I was stupid for leaving that on. Um, I was stupid for leaving the alternator on. That was a bit of a pain in the ass as well. And just doing this all by yourself, 
I would not recommend it. It's not fun. It's not fun. I can say I've done it, because, spoiler alert, I do actually do it. But, yeah, it's not fun. Uh, I actually ran out of light, actually, because this is, this is across a few days, as you can probably tell. Um... And so I run out of light oh, at one point. This is me. This is the morning. Uh, oh, so this uh, this is fun. I uh, So it's suspended and then I'm having to lift it because the engine is off center. So that's fun. It's tilted to one side. Uh, not backwards and forwards, but yeah, tilted to one side. So I end up having to lift it because basically what I'm trying to do here, which you can't see, which you're never going to be able to see in, in video footage, is I'm trying to line up the transmission to the back of the engine. And there's obviously dowel pins, you know, in the back of the engine block. And I'm trying to line it all up and it is a pain in the ass. It just doesn't want to go. And I've got to like, I've got to like go around different angles and stuff like this. And it's, yeah, it, this, is, this is probably the hardest part at one point. Now you can see me, I'm, I'm stretching myself. I'm in between the engine hoist the car and the engine and I end up lifting the engine on one side whilst pressing down on the other side whilst also hugging you'll watch me do it in a minute whilst hugging the transmission trying to get the transmission in it's just this has been such a joke like it was the biggest mess ever um, yeah it wasn't fun it was not fun at all so you can see that's what I start to do now in a minute. There you go. There's me hugging it. It looks a bit weird to be honest, but that's the only way I could do it. Because without two people, I have to get there and hug it and lift it. Whilst also <laughs> moving. Oh, it looks so dumb watching it back. But that is what I'm doing. I'm I'm lifting <laughs> one side of the engine. Whilst also pushing the transmission into it. And and uh Yeah. And that engine's not that's not that's not light. That engine is heavy. That was a heavy engine. So none of this was fun, basically, is what I'm saying, guys. Would not recommend. Would not recommend. But I get it. Oh, I do get it. But I thought I'd show the whole thing. I know this is a lot of the same stuff, and it's a lot of me talking. But I wanted to show the whole thing, because I wanted you to see just how difficult this was by yourself. Now, I could have taken out the transmission at the same time, but I didn't want to. I don't want to take the whole front of the end, end of the car out. So, lesson learned, maybe. Probably should take the whole thing out. Probably should. Probably should. But I also don't have a unit. And lesson learned here as well. Maybe I should get a unit. Anyway, this is me bolting it all up. Uh, enjoy my hurrah video. Yes, did it. We did it, we did it. Oh my God, we did it. That was an absolute pain in the ass. I don't even know if you can see me. I would not recommend doing that by yourself. I've cut myself up. I've hurt myself so much. But yeah, I was not going to pay someone to do it when they let me down. Anyway. <sighs> I've got such a mess to clean up. I'm so happy. So proud of myself. Um, yeah, what do you say? It's in. It's actually in. I, can't, I actually can't quite believe it, to be honest. Um... Yeah, there you go. Don't know what to say now. It's like the big job's done. Um, I'm probably gonna stop working for a little while now because this was a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it for a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take a few days off from this stupid car and then I'll get back to it, hopefully, maybe, we'll see. But it's in, it's actually in. I don't know if it works, so that might have, might have all been for nothing. <laughs> uh, never mind. Anyway, cool. Let's um, 
call it a day here. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and all the voiceover and the time lapse and stuff. I did my best. I did my best. Bye.